Hello guys, in this video I'm going to be building this Jordan 197 kit from Revel. So in the late 1990s Revel released a few of these F1 kits in 124 scale. You can see them here on the back of the box. And you might remember that I built the Jordan EJ10 recently as well. These kits are a bit hard to find these days but you can still find them on eBay and usually for a fairly reasonable price if you're willing to wait a while to find a bargain. If you've been following my channel for a while, you'll know that I built the Jordan EJ10 a while ago. And in fact, Revel have just re-released the Benetton Ford B194 um, a few months ago. The Jordan 197 competed, of course, in the 1997 Formula 1 World Championship, and it was driven by Ralph Schumacher and Giancarlo Fisichella. And it's probably best known for its striking livery, their bright yellow colour, the Benson & Hedges sponsorship, and the snake nose art. These Revel F1 kits are not known for being super high quality and in fact you can see a few bits of flash here on these parts on the sprue. Although you get a basic engine and exhausts, there's no way of seeing this detail once the model is built because as you can see here the top of the car is all one piece so you would need to modify that to make the engine cover removable which is something I'm not going to do. These decals look really nice Although this is an old kit, they haven't gone yellow or mouldy or anything, so I'm hoping they'll be as good as they were on the EJ10 which I built before. And the instructions are typical Revel. They're a little bit crowded, but they're not too hard to follow. So the first thing I had to think about was the fact that the cockpit of this car comes in two halves, top and bottom, as you can see. And it's clear when these go together that there's going to be a big horizontal seam line which is going to stand out through the paintwork. And of course the suspension arms need to go in between those two halves, which makes the assembly and painting process a bit more complicated. The way I decided to tackle this was to put the suspension arms in place, glue the two halves together, sand everything smooth, fill as necessary, and then do the painting afterwards. Looking at the engine, as I say, most of this won't be seen, but of course it does need to be constructed because the rear suspension hangs off the back of it. And it does need to be painted as well because, as you can see here, you will be able to see into it from the back of the car, even when the car is constructed. So you don't want to be looking in there and seeing yellow plastic. My approach with F1 cars is always to build as many sub-assemblies as possible. And so since the majority of the engine will be black anyway, I built up the engine and the suspension together as one sub-assembly. Black is the default colour for many components on F1 cars, so I gave the undertray a coat on both sides, leaving this bit here blank because those are the gluing points for the engine and the cockpit. And you can see the engine slides in nicely. Another small sub-assembly is the top of the engine cover. This gets painted a different colour. Again, there's a seam there which needs sanding. And you can see from the instructions that it has the option to include the TV camera pod. Although the instructions suggest there's a little notch to put that camera pod in, there actually isn't. Uh, so if you wanted to attach it, you just need to do that yourself. But I'm going to leave it off anyway, I prefer it to be off. The inside of the cockpit, top and bottom, were also painted in black and I gave the outside a coat of primer as well. Because it's hard to get coverage with yellow paint I decided to use a white primer base but even the white primer was struggling to cover the yellow plastic so I gave an initial coat of grey primer and once that had dried I put the white primer over the top of the grey primer. And here's the car after a coat of XF3 yellow. This yellow tends to get a little bit orange if you put a thicker coat on, so you have to be careful to get a consistent even layer because it shows up quite easily if there's a mix of uh, tones there. As you can see here, it was a bit of a waste of time painting the cockpit earlier because the primer and the yellow uh, ingressed into it. That's not a big problem though, I just brush painted the cockpit later. And did the same thing for the suspension arms as well.
The elements on the rear wing are keyed so they can only go in one direction. The next stage was to add the bodywork to the floor. This is always a little bit tricky because you need to have a good connection of course, but you don't want to add so much glue that it spills out and damages the paintwork. Of course you need to sand or scrape away the paint on the connecting points as well. I think now that's starting to look quite nice. The next step was the decals. And there are some fairly big decals on this kit, particularly the snake skin and the snake's head. The decals are quite thick as well. But considering they're 20 years old, they went down pretty well. A little bit of Tamiya Mark set. These side decals were probably the thickest and the hardest to get down, but also they had the advantage of covering any imperfections between the bodywork and the floor. It's nice that this nose decal is all one piece so that you can get everything aligned properly but it does mean it's a bit harder to hide those uh, edges of those decals. The snake's head decal comes in two parts and it has little notches to go around the wing mirrors. I also found it useful to cut it just at the point where the snake skin stops, where that suspension arm goes in, and put the two parts down separately. The instructions have a few inaccuracies, so for example here, this uh, red piece at the end of the snake decal clearly stops just at the back of the cockpit. But if we look on the kit, we can see that the decal goes back much further than that, all the way to the fuel refilling point.
One thing that I always struggle with is the circular wheel decals. I can never ever get them to stick to the outside edge and actually be in a circular shape. Every time I try to adjust one bit, another part moves. Um, they always end up looking like some kind of squished oval. Um, I just didn't use these because they just drive me mad. You can see the tyres have a little uh, seam that needs uh, sanding away, which is fine. And they also have some raised Goodyear Eagle detail. I started to paint that with yellow and it looked okay. And then I realised that on the instructions there are some Goodyear decals. So I sanded off the raised detail and used the decals instead and I think that looks much better. The wheels don't have much to attach to and as you can see here it's quite easy for them to uh, move in multiple directions before they're glued. So what I had to do is put on all four wheels and then just sit the vehicle on a flat surface, make sure all four wheels were vertical and aligned or pointing the same direction as well. And with that done, the vehicle is complete. Let's see the final result. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. These old Revel F1 kits are nice little kits. They're not super detailed, but they are the only option sometimes to build certain cars, unless you want to go to super expensive uh, resin and multimedia kits. If you see my other videos, you would have seen that I built the EJ10 Jordan a while ago as well. I have got quite a few F1 kits still in the stash, so there'll be some more coming up soon. If you keep an eye on my YouTube community tab, then you will see a few previews here and there. My next video will be this Tamiya Matilda in the desert scheme. So thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.